Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how a neuron can be stimulated to send a signal or be told not to send a signal. Now very quickly, what you need to remember is in order for a neuron to send a signal, so think about it, you've got a neuron with its big long axon. Remember that excitable tissues or cells, like neurons, have a charge difference from inside to outside. It's more negative inside than it is outside. In actual fact, if you were to compare that charge difference, it's negative 70 millivolts different. So inside is negative 70 millivolts compared to outside. So it's sitting right here. This is what's happening when the neuron is not firing off and it's resting. That's called the resting membrane potential. Now when we want this neuron to fire off and send a signal, what we do is we need to open up channels that let positive things like sodium and calcium inside to change that negative to a positive. So it needs to move up to a more positive area. Now once enough positive ions have moved in, enough positive sodium or enough positive calcium have moved in and it shifts this graph up. Once it's positive enough that it's negative 55, so it goes from negative 70 to negative 55, this is what we call the threshold. Once it hits negative 55, all of these positive channels open up. All of these positive sodium channels just go boom, 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 and they open up in this domino-like fashion, letting all this positive sodium move in. It starts here, it moves in, and then it goes dunk, 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 all the way down that axon. That's actually what an electrical signal is. That's how we know that something's touching my finger. Sodium ions are simply jumping into neurons all the way down my arm, into my spine, up to my brain, okay? But what stimulates these sodium channels to open up in the first place? This is that graded potential. So what I've got here is a neuron, and it's receiving a signal from two different neurons. It's got a neuron here that's sending a signal that's excitatory, and this neuron here is sending a signal that's inhibitory. Remember, neurons don't actually touch one another. There's a space in between that we call the synaptic cleft, and something needs to cross that synaptic cleft. That something is a neurotransmitter, which is simply just a chemical. For the excitatory neuron, the neurotransmitter it sends is an excitatory neurotransmitter. In this case, glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter that I chose. And for this one, that's inhibiting this neuron from sending a signal, it's releasing an inhibitory neurotransmitter. In this case, I've chosen GABA. Let's first start with the excitatory. So this neuron releases its neurotransmitter glutamate into the synaptic cleft. Now it diffuses across from its area of high concentration to its area of low and needs to bind to specific glutamate receptors. Now, what I've drawn up here are two different types of glutamate receptor. This glutamate receptor that it's bound to is sodium specific, which means when the receptor binds to this channel, it open, uh, so when the neurotransmitter binds to this receptor, it opens up its lid and positive sodium, which we know sits predominantly outside the cell, wants to diffuse down its concentrate, great, concentration gradient and go inside. So positive sodium goes from outside inside once the excitatory neurotransmitter has bound to it. That means as the positive sodium goes in, it takes its positive charge with it and it starts to get a little bit more positive inside the cell. Now this same thing happens if the excitatory glutamate neurotransmitter binds to another type of glutamate receptor called a calcium receptor, which flips its lid open and positive calcium comes in as well. If positive calcium comes in, it becomes a little bit more positive inside and again, starts to move closer and closer to this threshold of negative 55. If enough positive sodium come in or enough positive calcium come in or enough positive sodium and calcium come in, that it hits negative 55, then all these sodium channels open up and the signal is sent, okay? Now, if, now this is where we start to make graded potentials. If only a few sodium channels open up, then this only starts to get a little bit positive. And if that's it, it drops back down to its normal negative 70. If a couple of positive sodium opened up here, and then a couple of positive sodium up, open up here and here and here and here at the same time, then you add up all the positive charges that they're letting in in one go and it'll hit the negative 55. That's what we call spatial summation. Spatial summation is where multiple channels at the same time across different areas open up, let all this positive sodium in and it's enough to hit negative 55 and send an action potential which is that signal that's sent. Now that's spatial summation. There's another one called temporal summation, which means over time. 
So that means if we just focus on the one channel and we open up that sodium channel, positive sodium goes in, then it closes, it goes up like this, and then may stop a little bit, and then we open it up again, it may go like this, close it, open it up again, goes like this, and then finally over time, enough positive sodium enters the cell that it hits the threshold and a signal sent. So that's temporal summation, spatial summation. Now the other thing is that because it's letting positive things in, it's an excitatory signal. Here for GABA, what it does is it binds to a GABA receptor that's when it opens its lid, negative uh, chloride comes into the cell. Now because it's negative, it carries its negative charge with it and makes it even more negative inside the cell which makes it harder to send a signal and that's an inhibitory signal. So excitatory signals make it easier or more positive inside to send a signal and inhibitory signals make it more negative inside or more difficult to send a signal. This is what we call the graded potential.